Hello, this is Jerry Jenkins. This is a video to show you how to install Python 3.7 into the newest version of Windows 10. Uh, I made this video about two years ago and not much has changed, but I'm going to run through it uh, just a couple extra warnings. Uh, so first we're going to go to your browser and just go to python.org and then you're going to hover over downloads and just click on the newest version of Python here and it should automatically detect you in Windows. And Go ahead and hit run. Now you get this message which is new. Uh, Python 3.7 is, is available from the App Store but it's not a very friendly version of it in that it doesn't hook up with uh, PY Charm IDE and it might be poss not be possible to use certain features. So we're going to install this version anyway. So you just hit install anyway. So once it's downloaded, uh, you'll get this uh, icon. Now in Windows, I don't know, for some reason, both on my Mac and Windows, I'm having Windows pop-up windows now not pop up. They end up behind the window you're on. So I had to go down to this icon here to find this window. Um, so basically, there's some things you want to do here. So we're going to install it. You might write down where it's going to install it here. So it's going to install it inside of your user area in a place called App Data, which I think is an invisible folder. Uh, and you'll probably want to have this add Python 3.7 to path, and this will make it a little easier for other programs to find Python and run it if it's in the path, especially if you're running from the command line or from PowerShell. Uh, so go ahead and do that and say install now. And yeah, click on install now. Uh, this app's going to change your device, so you say yes. This is one of the security features of Windows. So we just wait for it to complete. Okay, so it was done. We're going to head, go ahead and close. Now if you go to your Windows uh, prompt, your Windows button, you'll see under recently added, it'll have something about Python here. Uh, and since we added it to uh, the path, we can go into the command prompt, magnifying glass, and type in command, hit enter. And we can type in Python uh, dash dash version. And it should tell us what version we're running. And it also has available pip, which is the uh, program that you use for installing new modules for Python to use. Uh, so that's its package manager. Um, and it also installs uh, idle. So I'm going to start idle. Idle opens up an application on your computer. Oops, it did not set up a path to idle. And let's see if I can find it this way. I D L E. And there it is. It, but idle opens up a uh, interactive uh, shell that you can type in commands. And uh, you can do Python code x equals uh, uh, 10 and y is equal to 2 uh, x times 2 and then we get the value of y and it's 80 so it's interactive that you can try out just little small bits of code in idle uh, it does a lot more uh, but it's a little primitive so you usually don't use it to write whole programs so I'm going to go ahead and close this so we've verified that Python is installed. You want to make sure you've done this before you install PyCharm. Now to in install PyCharm, we go to a site uh, for PyCharm. So I'm just going to search for PyCharm, and um, I'll just search for PyCharm. And it should be the first thing you see. Uh, well, it's the second thing, is PyCharm here from JetBrains. You want to see the JetBrains site. and uh, you click on download now there's going to be two versions uh, the professional version if you're a uh, if you want to pay for it that's a professional version it has more features and also if you're a student you can get the professional version or an educator uh, but you do have to uh, go on the site and find out how uh, you do that I think you go to buy and look under academic and you have to prove to them you're a student. So you either have to have an EDU in your email or uh, provide an international student ID card, I believe. 
Uh, but Community Edition is good for almost anything you'd want to do. Uh, so I'm going to download it, and it's free to everyone. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, get it started here. And uh, it's not in the App Store, I looked, uh, and you wouldn't want it from the App Store anyway, so I'm just going to say Install Anyway. And we probably don't see it, but you see this. That means there's a dialog back box that popped up. And so you have to say yes. And there we go. And if you don't see this, again, you can look for this icon. Uh, so here's the setup. So we're going to hit next. Uh, this is where it's going to install it. So it's going to install it inside of program files in your main uh, drive directory under JetBrains. And we're going to hit next. Now there's some options here you'll probably want to do. Uh, set up that you have a shortcut on the desktop is useful. And also this is useful to create associations where if you double click on p .py file in the finder it'll or the file manager it'll automatically open up pycharm. So we'll just hit next and accept the uh, defaults. Okay, we're all set. Uh, you could run it right away by clicking this. I'm just going to hit finish and we'll go to the uh, Microsoft button and you'll see it's recently added here. PY Charm. So we'll go ahead and open it. I'm going to close the browser. And so when you first see PY Charm, uh, it's going to give you some dialogues. So first, uh, since we've never installed it before, uh, it says, do you want to import the settings? If you had already installed it before and you're just getting an update, you could choose this and it would keep any customization you've done. So we're just going to do this. And then it asks, do you want a dark theme or a light theme? You can change this later. Um, so we're just, I'm going to use the light theme because it looks a little better on my lower resolution laptop. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and say next. And you can, if you use these uh, things, you can import them as a, a separate feature or plugin. Uh, we're not going to use any of them, so we're just going to say start using it. When you first open it and you don't have a current project, you can create a new project. and uh, Or you can open up an existing project. And you can also set global configurations, but you can also do that from the file menu. So we're going to get uh, create a new project, and it creates a new. Pro it makes a folder for you inside of your home folder. I'm, my home folder is just called Jerry, and uh, called PY Charm Projects. You can choose any folder to put your projects in, and then you name a folder inside of that uh, for your project. Uh, so I could make a project directly in Jerry and just. Uh, change this all to some name of some folder in Jerry. So, but the project should be a folder that has the contents of, of what you're working on. So I'm going to just type a hello folder. Now, oops, I hit enter. I didn't mean to do that. So what happened is it uh, automatically detected where Python is and it's creating what's called a virtual environment. And the virtual environment is what I was going to show you. So I'll create another uh, project right after this and show you. Uh, what a virtual environment is, though, it's a uh, it's it makes a reference to Python on your machine, but it puts a folder in your project that's called a virtual Python environment, which allows you to add and uh, uh, modules and packages for Python and it's just for your project. So if you make changes to those packages or use a different version of them, it won't interfere with other projects that may use different packages. So it's more of a modern way of developing Python so uh, you don't run into this problem. Uh, let me show you the other way of creating a folder. So I'm going to close this project. Oops, I don't want to exit PyUI Charm. I'm just going to close the project. This takes us back to the opening screen, so I'll create a new project, and I'll call it Hello2. Now, before you hit Enter, actually I should have done it before I named the project, 
pull this down so I'll show you what's happening. So first it automatically found the interpreter. If you have more than one version of Python uh, you can select them here or use these dots and browse to where the executable for Python is. Uh, but this, since we only installed one, it finds it. And that's also uh, be probably because we set up the path. Now instead of a virtual environment, we have the option of, of directly using the interpreter on the system. So in this case it doesn't find it. A system interpreter, it finds it. Hit OK. And so that set up the system interpreter. So this is going to, instead of using a virtual environment, it's going to directly use uh, the, the Python we just installed. So that's another way of creating a project. Either way, it'll work. So you hit Create, and then this is your folder that we created. And we're going to right click here and say uh, New Python File. And now we're going to write uh, the name of the file, so we're just going to call it Hello. Hit Enter. And it's going to automatically add the .py extension to the file. And we're going to just say print uh, quote hello. And uh, now to run it, you'll see this is grayed out. That's how you normally run it. So if you have a Python file, uh, this button is where you, if you have a project with multiple Python files, it doesn't know which one you want to run. So it starts out grayed out. If you want to establish which one you want to run, you can always go to the file you want to run, right click anywhere in the editor area, and say run, and the name of this uh, file. And once you do that, it's going to set up the green button to run. So if you have other files now, and you use the green button here at the top to run it, it'll always run this file as the main program. So here it ran it, and down here it opened up a window which showed us the output right here. This, by the way, is the command it sent to the command line uh, to actually run this. And you can actually copy and paste in this into command sh uh, the command program or uh, PowerShell, and it should run it uh, from either of those environments. So that's it. We've installed uh, Python, newest version, into the new version of Windows 10, and PyCharm, which is uh, definitely the best IDE to use. The uh, second most popular IDE is uh, VS Code or Visual Studio Code for your information.